Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Richard Kaufman. Richard, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to be with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, start us off by talking to the listeners about who you are and what your current focus is right now as an entrepreneur. Right now, I actually run a million-dollar company, uh, General Nutrition Center, but I'm transitioning out of that, and I'm actually going to start helping veterans that are dealing with any health, fitness, or addiction-related issues. So you had this nutrition business. I'm sure you, you've had some tough decisions through that business. And so I want to dive into some of those. But also, you're probably having some tough decisions as you're continuing to do this transition. So I want to talk about two different tough decisions. Number one, I want you to kind of start us off by talking to us about a tough decision that I like to call the sore thumb tough decision. It's a tough decision that you made. It did not have that good of an outcome. And maybe some of the, the lessons that you learned while going through that tough decision. Okay, that would be when I bought a piece of real estate from a family member and I didn't read the contract right and I got screwed out of $60,000. Now I learned how to read contracts very well. So let's talk about that a little bit because obviously, you know, from the surface, there is definitely some tough decisions that you made there. And it sounds to me like it didn't, and not doesn't just sound like it. It would definitely, when you lose $60,000, it's never good. It was a hard lesson to learn. What was it about the contract that was some things that you missed that caused that to happen? Well, I just figured that it was just a regular a plain contract. Put it this way, the person that I, I bought the house from, they only paid like 20000 for it. Mm-hmm. And I was told beforehand that once I paid that 20000 in, I would get the house. He was going to know and void the contract. Mm-hmm. But I got stuck paying for the whole thing. So I sold it and I went to go in the lawyer's office and pay him the 60000 thinking I'm getting 40000 back. He just got up and walked away. And I was like, oh, what just happened? And I was like, oh, you didn't read the contract right. And listen to other people. So, so. how did that, because this is a family member you said, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How are your interactions right now with that family member after all this happened? Well, I decided that, you know, if I ever ask forgiveness for God, for my sins, I have to forgive others. Sure. And so I just like, all right, it was a $60,000 mistake, but it was, but it taught me a lot because when my wife was about to go for her divorce at the time, I went and started reading her marriage, the divorce decree. And there was stuff in there that was not supposed to be in there that was supposed to be taken out that never was. And that would have cost her about 200 grand. So reading the contract I, in the long run saved me a lot of money. Yeah. So did this family member, that did they know what they were doing? Oh, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. They were smart. Oh. Yeah. Wow. But it's all good. I don't, it saved me like $200,000 in the future because now I know how to read a contract very well. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good positive way to look at it. That definitely is. So what would you say are some of the lessons you learned through that other than just learning to, to read those contracts? Probably just don't, I mean, take people at their word, but you kind of have to do your own homework also mm-hmm. and just don't, you know, don't go on emotion. Yeah. Sometimes you got to, you know, go with heart, but then you got to use common sense before you go with heart. Well, and I think another lesson that can be taken from this is, is your, you know, post bad outcome, you know, decision of, you know, this was definitely a bad decision on my part. I should have read the contract. Yes, this person knew this was in the contract and they were doing this to me, but, you know, people make mistakes and people, you know, have things that come up and they you know, can move on, you know. Yep, you suck it up and you drive on. So the military taught me. Yeah. Yep. So let's shift gears here a little bit and talk about a different type of tough decision that you had made that had a really good and positive outcome and some of those lessons. Probably when I sold that house, unfortunately made zero and actually took a loss on it and moved to New Jersey with $50 in my pocket. And I started my whole life over nine years ago. And now I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm, I'm very blessed. Now I have a wife and three kids and a beautiful home and a, a business that's doing well. So I'm blessed. And what did you do when you first went to New Jersey? What was the first thing you did with that 50 bucks to kind of get yourself on that right trajectory? I first thing I did was hit an AA meeting because that's what I've been doing when I was there. So that's the first thing I did when I got here. And when I was looking for work, I was still hitting meetings every day. Mm-hmm. And then I found a job and, and I just worked my way up in the company that I'm with now. 
Mm-hmm. And are you looking to yes, exit I'm that now? Or are you looking, looking to, to exit out okay. and to start doing public speaking and helping people that are going through, um, like I said, any health, fitness, and addiction, and also getting awareness out there of, of uh, first responder suicide rates because most mm-hmm. people don't even know, realize and know know what the rates are actually are. Mm-hmm. So as I started getting going, a lot a lot of podcasts now, a lot of TV shows, and hopefully I'll be I'm starting to get booked on uh, stages to talk to people about stuff like that. I'm retired military anyway, so it's not like it's a it's a it's a big money maker, you know. Yeah, and it's not you're not trying to, to sit there and try to you know make a bunch of money with it. It's really trying to at this point and just just giving back and and learning to help those people that really need the help yeah, the most. Well, when you hit fifty years old, you're kind of like, all right, I, you know, I lived the first fifty for me. Let me do the rest for somebody else. So, Richard, can you talk a little bit about the strategies that you use when you are facing a difficult decision? First thing I do is pray because I figure me and God are our majority, so it'll all work out either way. But then I just try to use, I try to do anything, any kind of business relationships that I'm in. I always try to do a win-win scenario to where, you know, both sides are actually come out of the end. There's no losers in it. Or I just won't do the deal. If, it, if it's or anything shady, I just won't do a deal like that. It's not worth it. It's not worth my reputation. So at what point do you come into that type of a decision-making process and where you're, you know, making sure it's a win-win for everybody and not compromising on your stuff? Or do you compromise in certain areas when you're trying to do some of those types of negotiations or whatever? Um, as long as it's not compromising any of my beliefs, sure. you know, because it's, it's not worth it in the end. You know, like the company that I'm with, you know, they've been in business for 23 years. They're a generational business. And they were known for being honest. Like when we, when we help customers, we probably turn away 30 to 40% of our sales because people don't need it. So there's no sense of, you know, if you build a reputation like that, it's no sense in hurting something, you know, ruining a reputation for a $100 bottle, bottle of vitamins. It's not worth mm-hmm. it. So I just won't, I won't do it. I refuse to do it. I won't do anything underhanded or shady. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, I, I want, I want somebody that my kids, you know, look up to, you know, legacy is always more valuable than currency. We're talking to Richard Kaufman and we're going to take a quick break here from one of our show sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk to him about some of his favorites as it relates to his life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO? which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Richard Kaufman, and we're going to start by talking to you about a technology. I know you're not a big technology or techie type person. Obviously. um, (laughs) But I want to, in this series of quick questions and answers we call the trifecta, I want you to talk to us about the favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day. Probably, I mean, I just have an iPhone. That's about as technical as I get. But I'm in contact with a, with a lot of people and a lot of friends every day, and a lot of my um, you know, suppliers and stuff like that that I work with, because it just they become friends of mine. Not only are there is it a business relationship, but they become close personal friends of mine. So I keep in contact with all of my suppliers on a daily basis. And what's a quote that you have heard that's helped you as an entrepreneur? Definitely when I met Gary Vee and he told me, I asked him what's one thing that you can actually, piece of advice you can take, I can take away. And he said, legacy will always be more valuable than currency. And a book that you have read that you would recommend? Um, I'm actually reading Rise and Grind right now by Damon John and anything by Gary Vee. I have Damon John's book. I actually saw him speak at, uh, at the Grant Cardone conference earlier this year. Yeah, he's, he's an amazing guy. He is, he is. So what's the next thing for you right now on your vision and your dream board? Uh, right now, I've just been in, um, I've actually, I don't know if this is going to come to fruition, but we're, me and a couple of friends of mine in the veteran community, we're trying to see if we can rent out either Madison Square Garden or the Prudential Center 
to have a get together to help Gold Star families, people that have lost uh, husbands, wives, and children in battle. So we're trying to see if we can get people enough people to get together for something like that. That will be a very big undertaking, but I like it. It's scary. I I know. But it's scary, you know? Like you said, you got to be, in order to succeed, you have to be uncomfortable. You got to get out of that comfort zone and be uncomfortable. And that would definitely make me uncomfortable for sure. That's why I've been like, I messaged Ed Milet and I'm like, if you can talk to me, you know? So he messaged me back. He said, we'll talk in the future. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, It would definitely be a good resource for you with that for sure. Yep. Like he always says, you know, the enemy of of greatness is being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So get uncomfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. I like it. Yep. Well, Richard, thank you for taking some time out of your your schedule today to be with us here on the podcast. How can the listeners reach out to you if they want to get some more information about this new thing that you're trying to start with the veterans and maybe trying to help you with that a little bit or just want to follow you more? Well, on Facebook, it's just Richard Kaufman. They can follow me. But also, next thing I asked Gary, I said, what what can I do that it'll start improving my business today? He says, make yourself a hashtag. So Mm -hmm. I did. And it's hashtag supplement guy and jay like new jersey and we'll make sure that we put all of those in our show notes so that the listeners that don't have any way to write that down right now can go yeah. to the back to the website and get it and uh, thank you again so much for taking some time out of your schedule and look forward to following you and having you on a future podcast episode as you continue to grow well thank you god bless you and bless the family thank you for listening to the tough decisions network be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.